Hey everyone, and welcome to week five of my Achilles recovery journey. I am Dr. Stacy Barber, also known as the Physio Fix, and I'm here to kind of share what I'm doing each week, um, what's going well, what's not going well, what hurts, and what kind of progress I'm making. So week five, um, I'm week five, day three post-op as of right this second. So a lot has happened this last week. I started walking, right? I told you guys that the moment I hit week four post-op, I got up took off my boot, started weight bearing, started shifting, kind of moving around, loosening things up and started taking some baby steps without my boot on. So that went really well. Um, and then I started, you know, kind of progressing more of those exercises. I started doing more squats, RDLs, lateral band walks, heels elevated squats, um, TKEs, glute bridges, stuff like that. You can see that I'm doing all these weight bearing exercises now and I'm doing them three times a week. I'm really trying to focus when I'm doing these exercises to not shift, to not rotate, to not like pivot, to make sure that 50% of my weight is on that left leg. That's my surgical leg. 50% of the weight is on my right leg and I am doing the movement patterns the same way that I used to. I went back to the doctor this week. So once I was like five weeks and one day, I went back to the doctor and he gave me the green light to be weight bearing fully in my boot which he knows I've already been weight bearing without the boot, but now like since I'm not in 22 degrees of plantar flexion because he moved it from 22 degrees to neutral, so I'm at zero now, now I can kind of walk all the time with my boot because I wasn't walking all day long before. Like once I hit four weeks, I was just walking during my physical therapy. And then I was walking like when I you know, got up in the morning, kind of moving around. And then when I like was on my lunch break throughout the middle of the day, and then at the very end of the day, I was also moving around too. So I would say that I was on my feet for let's say four hours a day, okay? So nothing crazy. Um, it wasn't all the time at all. And now I can be on my feet all the time because now my boot is in zero degrees and that's kind of more of a normal gait pattern not normal like fully, but it's way more normal than it used to be. So I want to talk a little bit about that giant transition from 22 degrees of plantar flexion to zero degrees. That is a big jump. So just think about it. Your foot's been stuck in this 22 degrees position. You're not supposed to be weight bearing, right? If, if you didn't know better and like start with weight bearing, you would be in 22 degrees non weight bearing. And now all of a sudden on the same exact day, you go from 22 degrees to zero degrees and you go from non weight bearing to full weight bearing. What? Like we skipped so many steps along the way. So I would say if I were to develop, to develop this protocol and make it better, I would have done 10 degrees each week, right? I was in this boot in 22 degrees for two and a half weeks. So I could have been in 22 degrees and then 12 degrees and then two degrees. And then maybe by, you know, this point I'd be at zero and maybe I should, would have been from toe touch weight bearing to partial weight bearing to full weight bearing, right? It doesn't need to be such a big jump. I feel like that's really where a lot of people start feeling a lot of pain and a lot of problems because they move too fast. We talk about it all the time in the physical therapy world. Like most people start having problems when they do too much too fast. What did I just do? Or what was I supposed to do? It was a big jump and it was going to be doing too much too fast that my body wasn't ready for. And even though I've been doing weight bearing stuff for one week, um, after I was able to be full weight bearing in my boot at neutral for a full day at the office, I was in so much pain. Like my heel was throbbing. It was like the very bottom of the heel. I started having a lot of pain, even the top part of my foot. It was just different. It was, it was a very drastic change. You know, I haven't walked in about six weeks at this point since my injury and it was just a lot in one day. So I would definitely recommend talking to your doctor and asking them if they can do more of that gradual approach to change your, your um, positioning of your boot and also maybe kind of gradually reintroduce the weight bearing as opposed to, hey, you're good to go. Like now you can be full weight bearing. Oh yeah, let's change it from 22 to zero. Okay, I'll see you again in a week and a half. Like what? <laughs> um, but also at my you know appointment, he also talked to me a little bit about working on normal gait mechanics to make sure I'm not limping to really take it slow, which I've been doing already. Um, and then he's also told me that I'm going to be in this boot for three more weeks. So at that point I'll be eight weeks post-op and then I will be transitioning from the walking boot to a shoe. 
So I don't really know what that's exactly gonna look like yet. He seems to like leave the details to the last minute. Um, but he did tell me to go ahead and buy this thing called the Akili, Akilo train. Um, it's like, I'll show you a picture here. It looks like it has like a gel pad on the back and it's kind of like an ankle brace and you're supposed to wear this in your shoe. So then your shoe doesn't just like rub and cause friction to the back of your incision and like your anchors and stuff like that. It just seems really overpriced. So I haven't figured out if I'm going to buy that specific one that he's telling me to get or try to find something that's comparable um, or just maybe some like gel pads or something like that. So. I'll figure that one out. If you guys have any ideas, drop them below because I'm definitely still trying to figure out the best thing to get moving forward. Um, also this week, since we started already talking about transitioning to a shoe, uh, I jumped on that Facebook group, the support group that I told you guys I joined last week and they were saying that Birkenstocks are some of the best shoes to transition into shoes with because they don't have like a the back or the heel so then they don't rub on things throughout the day so i've never owned a pair of birkenstocks and so i started looking on you know on amazon and i found a couple pairs so i ordered them so they should be here soon because i'm sure i'm not going to want to wear a shoe all the time at first anyways because that rubbing it's already irritating like in my boot it irritates me all the freaking time and that's the reason why i want to take the boot off it just bothers me a lot so I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know how that goes when I start transitioning. Um, another thing this week, I finally was able to shower without my like cast boot protector thing. So my incision is fully healed. It looks really good. I'll post a picture right here. I mean, it still has like brand new baby skin. What I call it, it's like very pink. That means that that tissue is healing and that's a really good sign. There's no openings there. There's no infection. So we're good and I can start showering normal. Um, I'm still using my shower chair just obviously for safety because although I'm now double leg and I'm weight bearing, if I close my eyes, it's still a little bit sketchy. So still using my shower chair and that's going to be probably something I'm going to use for quite a while just to make sure that nothing's going to happen while I'm in the shower. So this week is my first week that I did only three days of physical therapy. So I did therapy on Monday, Thursday, Friday. With my physical therapist, I work full days uh, treating patients myself on Tuesdays, and then I work part online and part in person on Wednesdays, and then I just do onlines only on Thursday, and then I do a full day on Friday. So my schedule is kind of all over the place, so I could only fit in three days this week, uh, which was actually really tough to go from Monday all the way to Thursday because I could just tell at the end of the day my ankle was really stiff being in that boot all day long. It's honestly like... I'm starting over every single time. <laughs> Once I take off the boot, it's like my range of motion is stuck, well now at zero degrees, right? So I've been able to achieve seven degrees of dorsiflexion, woo! Um, but now since I'm stuck in zero degrees again, it's like I, that's all I have. So then to go back and try to regain more and more range of motion, it's really, really been challenging. So it just feels like you know, every day is a new day and every time you wake up, you have to get things moving and get the blood flowing and get things to loosen back up. And that's not something that just happens in the morning that happens every time you get out of your boot. So do lots of range of motion exercises throughout the day. I'm constantly taking off my boot and then just like moving my foot around, you know, just sitting in my chair, putting my foot under me and like rocking forward, getting a little bit of that dorsiflexion going on. I will say that the dorsiflexion doesn't feel as painful as it did last week like trying to push into it but there is still a very clear stopping point and it tells me like when i push too much and once i you know push too much it really still feels like it's going to re-rupture and explode so i back off so um, i've only been able to gain seven degrees of dorsiflexion and i myself need at least 40 degrees of dorsiflexion to be able to get to my back to my sport so it's going to be a long process, a long journey, and I hope to gain five degrees each week. And so that's what me and my physical therapist discussed and that's the goal. Oh, for sleeping. So now that he moved my boot back to zero degrees, I had just gotten comfortable or like used to 22 degrees and could finally like, you know, sleep throughout the night. I actually wasn't sleeping in my boot throughout the night, but my foot was like pretty much still staying in 22 degrees as I laid on my side throughout the night. But now that he moved me to zero, I really want to try to wear my boot throughout the night. And I'll kind of explain that for a second. So before I could get away with just laying on my side because 
it was fine. But now since I'm at zero degrees, that even zero degrees puts a stretch on the Achilles. And I want that constant stretch. It's like a splint to be able to mobilize that tissue a little bit more and more as I'm sleeping. So if I can work on mobility while I'm sleeping and stretching that tissue, then it's gonna be a lot easier to push into more and more dorsiflexion when I'm doing my daily activities and therapy throughout the day. So I've been trying to wear my boot at night and it is absolutely miserable. It just feels like starting over again. It's like once you put it on, it just feels so tight. And then like an hour in the incision just starts like burning. And then I just wanna like rip off the Velcro and take the boot off. Uh, what I've done so far is I have, you know, I have one of these hinged walking boots and I also have one of the normal cam walking boots that I was given when I first went to the doctor before I got surgery. And that's what I'm using instead. So my hinged walking boot is set to zero. Guess what? That's what usually a walking boot is set to anyways, cause that's neutral. So I'm just using the one that they gave me before, which has a thicker lining in it and like a kind of more padding. And so that's less irritating to my scar and my incision. And I seem to tolerate that a little bit better, but not great. So I still, I can wear that like two hours at a time and then I rip it off and then I try to like go back to sleep on my side. And then in the morning, then I put it back on again when I first get up to try to get like two hours of stretch before, you know, and the, when I first go to bed, two hours of stretch when I like, right before I get back out of bed for the morning. And at least four hours is better than zero for stretching, right? Um, so I hope to like, keep building and building and be able to sleep longer and longer with that boot on. But right now it's still pretty painful and I can only tolerate like two hours and two hours. So also throughout the day right now, I'm like, I was out and about with my friends for about five and a half hours today, wearing my boot constantly. And that's a long time. So my leg was like throbbing by the, you know, the end of it, I really had to like take off my boot while I was at lunch with them and like prop my leg up and like move my foot around because everything just felt so stiff and so swollen that it just, it was kind of miserable at that point. So, you know, keep your scooter nearby or keep your eye walk nearby or keep keep your crutches nearby because you might need to slowly use them as you transition to full weight bearing because going from zero to a hundred is, is not smart and it's also just not helpful, you know? So give yourself some time to like gradually transition and make sure you have those assistive devices nearby in case you need to use them. Uh, I think the last most exciting thing is that I was able to walk my dog today. So. Uh, my dog is a, kind of an older dog. He's my, my best friend and we've always gone hiking and walking and running together. And this injury has kind of obviously killed me and it's also killed him. So today was the first day. I'll put a video here. I was so slow, bless his heart. He is the most patient dog with me. Um, but he was so excited to be able to like, to go on a walk with his mom again. So. I was unable to walk kind of on the sidewalks. Our sidewalks here, I don't know if your guys' sidewalks are different, they kind of slope down to go into like the driveway. So it's hard to walk as is right now. And it's definitely hard to walk on like a slant, right? So I would walk on the road and then he would walk on the sidewalk. And yeah, we walked about for about 25 minutes, which it was not very far. It's probably about half a mile total, but at least it's something and it's a start and it made his day and it made my day. So let's call that a win. All right, guys, I think that's it for this week. I'm still, you know, doing a lot of my own strengthening exercises, upper body, lower body, stuff like that. I'm still focusing on my recovery. I'm doing Normatec compression. I'm doing E-STEM. I'm doing, I'm taking my multivitamin. I'm taking my fortified joint supplement. I'm taking a lot of pre, uh, pre protein, if I can speak, a lot of protein um, and a lot of creatine. I was trying to like blend those words together. So that's all the things that I'm doing right now. And I'm still gonna continue to do those and I'm gonna work, still focus on my sleep. And I'm not obviously drinking any alcohol right now because that would hinder my tissue recovery too. So everything is moving in the right direction. I'm five weeks, three days out from surgery right now. And yeah, I'm just excited because I know that I'm gonna be transitioning into you know, a shoe very soon and we'll see how that goes. And I'm just one day closer to being able to get back to squatting fully and doing all the things that I wanna do. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you guys are enjoying these, subscribe below to my channel and post any comments or questions that you have and have a great day.